Hey everyone, it's me Hero Forever, and today we're playing a little bit of automation as well as BeamNG, but we're using an AI to tell us what type of car to build. I don't know if the AI is actually going to be able to give me any relevant answer to this that I'll be able to work with, just because it's so many words and I don't really know how far AI has come. However, I've seen similar things on other people's YouTube channels like Sambucha where they rely on using AI for some of their videos and I thought it was pretty cool so I wanted to do my own thing. Anyways, I feel like this is everything that needs to be asked and I guess we'll see what the answer is. Alright. Holy cow. No way. It's still going. It even says the engine. Okay. So SUV or crossover, that's cool. This body style strikes a balance between off-road capabilities and daily usability. Okay. It's high enough for off-roading with a sturdy build. I like that. Slightly elevated stance with prompt wheel arches would work well for a vehicle that's both functional and aesthetically appealing. Chassis is going to be high strength steel for the frame to endure durability and safety. Okay, that's fine. It's going to be a little bit heavier. Body panels, lightweight yet durable, materials like aluminum. So the actual body is going to be made of aluminum stuff, but we want it to have a really nice design in its body. Heavy duty components like solid axle or independent suspension systems with long travel to handle rough terrain. I like this. I don't usually do solid axle. Seats and layout. So there's going to be a total of five, two in front, three in rear. Like I said, this is really similar to like a Jeep Cherokee. Top speed, 120 to 130. Okay, that's... Pretty fair, most cars can do about that, unless they have a little tiny uh, dirt bike engine or something. Around 300 to 350 horsepower? Holy Transmission eight speed automatic with a manual six speed for enhanced driver control. Okay, I think I'm gonna stay with the automatic transmission. I'm trying to go for like realism too. Based on how the engine is, it has a lot of power. And it's also a pretty practical vehicle. So I want it to be practical for the user too. And nowadays manual transmissions aren't very practical. It's going to be equipped with all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, with off-road tires. So it's definitely an off-roader car. I totally get what this AI is presenting me. For my professional job, I do a lot of automotive painting. Therefore, I kind of know what a lot of these colors are in my head in like 10 variants of every single one of these colors. So I have an idea of what might look okay but i also have an idea of what i don't like and what i don't like is the matte green finishes that these newer companies are putting out like i think lucid made their own version there was another two rivian might even have it actually we're gonna go with this and i want to go for the widest wheelbase 120 is fine and here we go the ai wanted us to do aluminum panels i agree with that it has to be between 40 and seventy-five thousand dollars. therefore I feel comfortable doing a space frame, especially if we're going for a newer, sleek design with a lot of technology. We don't need a normal frame vehicle, so to speak. It did say we need to do steel, so we'll do that. And I want to do the V6 option that they gave us. I think it was a 3 liter V6 turbocharged, 300 horsepower to, or 400 horsepower car. So we'll do front longitudinal since it's going to be a V6. The AI wanted us to do solid axle coils. We'll do the same thing in the back. Moving on, we can now start the engine. Call this one the Off-Road Hero. Very original. Now it didn't specify if it should be a 60 or 90 degree V6. I'm going to assume it's a 60 degree because it's a little bit more smooth debatably and it's a little bit more money to produce and we aren't going for a super cheap car. We're mainly using the AI for design but I do need to know like the basic limitations to this. So cast iron that works but it also says we can use aluminum so sounds like when it comes to the specifics of the engine we're going to be able to do what we want cast iron isn't too bad from this point forwards that ai gave us a good design on what we need for the essentials of our engine however i'm going to have to make actual judgments off of automation itself in order to reach the horsepower and torque that it wants us to reach i'm going to do an overhead cam with four valves that way we have a lot of airflow with exhaust gases and everything Head material, cast iron is fine. Cast iron, cast iron, or cast light, cast light. I think we're actually just going to keep no balancing mass for now, but I know we're going to have to add that later on. We're not going to put a turbocharger on yet because I want to tune the rest of it and then add on the turbocharger. Direct injection, 
per cylinder. Since we have a turbocharger, I want there to be a lot of intake. Performance mid, that'll work. Next, headers. Let's just do cast mid. I just added in the turbocharger and did the final tuning that it needs. Now this is what it looks like and all we have to do is paint it. What color should I make my engine? It can be more than one. Let's see what they think. Okay, matte black. So they're going for realistic, bright red. Okay, so it looks like we have red, orange, matte black. They want us to do a matte green finish for that actual car. I think the red makes it look a lot more powerful of an engine than it really is. It kind of gives me like the supercharger feel when I look at it. So I guess that is kind of what we're going for. Faster engine, off-road, fancy, and kind of like exotic, but not too much over the top. We need to do 4x4, four 8-speed four, automatic. It needs a manual locker. I'm kind of thinking like an all-terrain tire. The only other one I would do is hard long. It requests that we make it into rigid design. Currently, it's way too curved up front. So if we flatten it out, it gives it that rigid look to it. And it looks a little bit more aggressive, so to speak, in the front. Not to mention, it's a little bit better with the ground clearance approach angles that we have. I think a subtle rigid design would be better than doing this. Because this kind of gives me like a, a minivan look again. Kind of like a Chrysler Pacifica. Before it looked like a town and country, and now it's looking like a Pacifica. This definitely looks a lot more rigid. However, there's a big open front area. We can reduce that by bringing this down. But then it just looks not as aggressive, I feel like. So maybe something in the middle. Yeah, this will do. I'm happy with this. Let's do alloy wheels and continue on. Solid disc. Let's just do two pistons, see if that's good for now. Solid disc, two pistons. This thing isn't going that fast, so it really doesn't need it. And I need to change up the rim so I can actually see how big the rotors are, but I guess if I go under here, it's good enough for now. Yes, it has 350 horsepower, which is a pretty good amount of power for a vehicle this size. However, it really doesn't need launch control. Therefore, we're just going to do traction control and ABS. That would probably be the most beneficial for what we're dealing with right here. Advanced tens, of course. The AI did mention for the suspension that we could use air if it was a more expensive model. However, this is like a mid grade type model, I would say. Also, it would be better for off-road if we did active comfort. The top speed requirement is between 120 and 130, so we're gonna do 125. The basic outline of this car is now done. It can pull just over 5,000 pounds. A zero to 60 is much lower. And um, everything else is basically exactly what the AI was recommending. So we're gonna keep it at this, start designing the car, and then we'll throw it into BeamNG and see what it can do. I kind of assumed automation had a matte finish option on here, but it appears they don't. So I just turned off the pearls and the flakes and the shininess to put it into comparison of what a different vehicle might look like. Something like this, maybe. All that clear coat shine, and then you get something like this, and it's just really boring. I think that's part of the reason I don't like this color. It's just a boring color. There's not much going on, but... We're going to do it for the video and for the AI and see what happens. We're back now and I just finished designing the entire car. It has really good ride height level. It also has a nice approach angle and it's rigid. I like where I chose. I chose to do the handles right above the body line. It has two sunroofs. From this angle it has a little bit of a Jeep Compass look. From the back it has a little bit of a newer Cadillac look. And from the front... I don't know. It has a minivan look, I think. Definitely a minivan look on some bigger wheels. And then, of course, I added a little tow hitch in the back because it needs to pull five to 7,000 pounds. The only real concern I have with this car is when I export it into BMG, I wonder if it's going to change the color of the vehicle at all. I know that used to be a huge issue when you exported vehicles into there. I don't know if it's still an issue or not, so I guess we'll find out. I present to you the off-road hero. $70,000 car, approximately. Uh, pretty good approach angle, meant for off-road use. 350 horsepower, V6, 60 degree, turbocharged engine. Let's just give it a test. 
Yeah, it has some transmission issues, that's for sure. I wasn't too happy about putting the 8-speed in there. It looks like it can be an okay vehicle, especially if it does well off-road. Yeah, look at that. Took that well. Yeah, it has pretty good acceleration. It just doesn't want to shift, but certainly if we wanted to, we could change up the transmission to make it drive a little bit nicer. However, that would go against what AI says, so we'll just keep it how it is for now. The suspension's stiff, but not too stiff. It still handles the bumps really good. And it has enough power to get up, I would assume, just about anything. I really like the ground clearance on this vehicle, though. There we go. Look at that. Took that really well. Let's see how it can handle over here. I kind of feel like it's going to tip over. Okay. I was kind of trying to get it to without going too fast to purposely make it tip over. So it was kind of like I wasn't going easy on it. Made that really well. Oh, this is good for the suspension. My other cars would have taken that terribly. Ooh. Okay, so it can't handle that too well. Let's try this again. I don't really know what the goal of this is. Are we just trying to drive on our side and see if we can handle it? Because if that's what the goal was, we did it. Right here, I don't really have... I guess this actually works pretty well. I think this is just to test how the alignment is, maybe. I'm not quite sure. But the suspension is really good, so I'm happy about that. I don't expect it to be able to make it up here, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a boost. We'll bring it right to 50 miles an hour and then we'll floor it going up. No, it didn't really lose any speed. Uh, let's actually try it at a lower speed maybe. First we have to get it out of here. This is actually a really good test right here. This, I need like a truck or something for this. I have a really good car that would work for this though. Technically. Look at this thing, it just pulls itself right out. It doesn't care. How about this? Okay, last thing I wanna test before we take it into a real world environment is how it can handle these rocks. This is like my favorite part out of all of BeamNG is just driving cars over these rocks. It's just my thing. The suspension, I really do believe is perfect. Can we drift it all? Oh, I know what we can do actually. Let's uh, bring it into two wheel high and we'll do a lock differential open front. Yeah, this thing's totally able to drift. So that's awesome. Let's bring it over to the grass and see what can happen. Slow down a little bit. Yep, it's definitely able to. It's very capable of a car. Yeah, so I'm totally happy with that. And we'll just drive it through this little mud area. All right, here we are up against our component. He has a lot lighter and faster of a car, it looks like, right off the bat. Yeah, this thing is just terrible. It's the transmission, I know it is. I could go and modify it if I wanted to, but I want to stick with what the AI told me to do. I don't think the 8-speed is helping us much. I would honestly just put a manual in here. I mean, 350 horsepower should be enough to get a car like this moving really good. It's just shifting way too soon. I mean, he's almost out of view distance from us. No. We're just gonna race our best lap and hope that maybe he crashes or something. Maybe we'll still win, who knows. But I mean, I'm taking these corners at like 20 miles an hour. This doesn't help us. If we actually have the acceleration I thought we would have, then we'd be doing good. And we don't have the handling because we have off-road tires. It's a little bit unfair to race this car. Yeah, it's just, it's a boat. Really, that's what it should be considered more so. And on top of that, our alignment's all messed up now. However, it's still good to see what our best lap time can be. So we're going. I mean, it, it can get to the higher speeds, definitely. It has the power, it's just the transmission. That's really what I think it is above all else. And uh, we're gonna have to start slowing down for this turn right up here. I guess not. Thought that might've been it. It's up here, I think I'm referring to. It's a small turn and then it gets bigger once I pass this. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. I mean, there's no traction in this thing. It has zero traction. 
and like I said, it's a boat, it's heavy. But I mean, you've seen how good it was doing off-road. It's definitely good for being an SUV off-roader, but for this, for actual racing, you'd be better off with like literally anything else. You could use my Chevy Cruze in a race and you'd be fine. Yeah, the steering's terrible. I tried to tune it the best I could while being still within the AI limits, but there's no hope. He might already be done, actually. Wow, I can't believe how long this is taking. Yeah, look at that. That's not good. There's like no forces. Keep in mind, I'm trying to counter steer right now, too. I kind of want to race in like one of my normal cars just to show you guys that I'm actually better than what it looks like. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. This is basically it, though. We're obviously not going to win. I don't even think I can turn. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just going to start wrapping it up now. If you guys want to see anything else, let me know in the comments down below. And sorry, I'm thinking a lot during this race and it's causing me to stumble. But yeah, so this is the AI car. If they could have it their way, I don't think they would have it any other way than this. And if you guys want to see anything else, let me know down in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe if you're new.